Hello and welcome back to our series exploring what the circular economy means for leading financial institutions. My name is Emily Healy. I am the project manager for our finance initiative at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Today we are delighted to have Bas Ruta joining us in our studio. Bas is the global head of sustainability at Rabobank, responsible for the setting the sustainable strategy, policy framework, reporting and sustainable business development. Bas is also involved in a number of partnerships and initiatives, including initiating a billion dollar pledge for forest protection and sustainable agriculture, as well as having a number of supervisory board positions. Welcome Bas, well, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. How are you today? Thanks, good. Good, good. Um, so I know our organisations have been working together since the early days of the foundation. So circular economy is clearly not a new topic for Rabobank. So I wanted to kick off by asking what led you to explore circular economy in the first place? Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for asking. I think the whole concept of circular economy, of course, is not that old. Uh, I think we started talking about it, thinking about it approximately nine years ago, eight to nine years ago. Uh, it was rather new then, um, but we immediately saw that the relevance of treating raw material and waste smart, but also new business development in a more holistic, a more integrated way, including material use uh, is a relevant topic to us as a bank. So that is why we immediately decided to spend more time analyzing it and also identifying whether we could help our clients use that concept in a strategic, smart matter, making business out of it, while at the same time uh, making sure that this whole concept of circular economy uh, would actually help realize the sustainable development goals. Uh, of course, that concept is by then of course, was not yet in this, under the same name available, but is crucial for sustainable development for, well, Earth as a whole. And uh, material use is, is a key component of uh, making sure that we reach the most important uh, parts of those sustainable development goals, uh, because scarcity will go up, uh, a lot of direct and indirect consequences will take place, and we jointly need to make sure that we consume less while at the same time maintain the pace of our economies. So to us, circular economy combines the interests of our clients, lowering our risk on resource scarcity, but at the same time contribute materially to uh, sustainable development and the SDGs. So you talk there about lowering your risks and responding to client demand. Can you tell me a little bit more about those and other opportunities that you see for Circular Economy to create value for Rabobank? Sure. Well, um, when we talk about re resources, it's of course clear that uh, any producer of goods that is able to minimize the use of, of raw material and as a result doesn't need to purchase as much raw material as in the past will reduce its cost. So that's clear. That's a very easy to understand part. But we need to also understand that at the same time, lowering waste and trying to avoid waste is already a topic that is going to reduce costs as well, because most of the waste cannot be disposed without cost. So lowering waste also short term uh, cost advantage. Uh, but in addition to that, the topic is becoming more and more strategic very, very quickly. Um, if we look at a number of the materials that are used by our clients, they get scarcer and scarcer. And as a result, it becomes a strategic topic whether you are actually able uh, to get the right uh, raw material in order to continue the production of your products and services. Uh, we've seen this in examples such as uh, uh, laptops and, and PCs or, or mobile phones that are increasingly used by the providers of the raw material to actually get them on the market uh, to maximize their, their power in the supply chain. So we see China uh, coming in and we have a number of other examples where we see that people who actually minimize the raw material and minimize the waste as well have a strategic advantage and a cost advantage. Now as a bank, those two topics are of course crucial for the long-term success and survival of your clients. And that is why we think that we 
can help them on those topics and at the same time also act in the best interest of the bank by lowering the risks of our financing. And can you give some examples of what Rabobank is already doing to capture this opportunity and support clients? Sure. I think an important example is that uh, after the anal analytical phase of, say, eight years ago, uh, we identified that a number of the more front-running clients of the bank who also entered into dialogue about the circular economy and the strategic advantage it could have for them, also asked us whether we could play a role in actually linking them to other front-running companies to jointly build new business. And that is how we created what we called and still call the circular economy challenge. And uh, the first challenges we started were actually a combination of an analysis in a certain region uh, within, uh, in this case, the Netherlands, where we started this project, where we were analyzing on a macro level uh, the, the raw material and the waste flows in that region and also identified hotspots to actually prevent waste, waste from occurring uh, by combining people, companies who could use the waste of, say, company A uh, to actually produce goods uh, in company B without the need to use new raw material. So we actually built what we call a challenge where we combined an analysis for the region with uh, a process where we would put together anything between 10 and 25 companies to analyze the opportunities that combining those raw material and waste flows would actually create in lowering uh, raw material use and minimizing waste while at the same time making new business. And that is what we've done uh, with over 400 companies today where we've actually did those challenges and even helped individual clients build new business models out of it, including, and that is nice to say, a number of new joint ventures in companies emerging as a result of such a process. Brilliant. And, and could you talk a bit about what the um, broader impact has been on that, perhaps with other clients and, and other stakeholders, perhaps ones who weren't so aware of the circular economy um, before? Sure, I think uh, what we see, and, and, and that is also partly why the whole concept circular economy is gaining momentum so rapidly, that we saw a number of very successful examples of companies actually making a very profitable but also innovative sustainable business out of this concept. So we saw new businesses popping up using the circular economy concept as their business strategy and getting market share relatively quickly, uh, which also triggered other entrepreneurs saying, well, this may be a concept that could actually be relevant to us as well. And of course, being, being a bank that is very active, both in agricultural supply chains worldwide, where there's a lot of raw material and waste uh, that we can optimize together, but also working in the regions in our home market in the Netherlands, uh, we are actually able to also have a strategic advantage over our competitors by combining the companies that we already finance in a certain region and adding value to them as clients of the bank by making the combination of uh, companies in a certain area where they can optimize their business model uh, using our knowledge and network. And that creates, and I need to say we hadn't expected it so fast and so big, um, that creates a lot of uh, new business that also requires additional financing. So it lowers the risk to us, but it also helps our clients and therefore us building new business. And that leads me nicely on to the question about where, where you see this going in future, um, financing the circular economy within Rabobank, but also in the industry more broadly. Yeah, I think uh, the whole idea of waste and minimizing waste is much older than the concept of circular economy. So there have always been traders in waste streams. Uh, there have always been traders in raw material flows that have been thinking about optimization. But I think what is different here is two things. First of all, the way companies cooperate in 
maximizing the efficiency of raw material use is getting much more sophisticated. So it's not always a one-on-one. -on -one. There are also uh, examples of three or four or five companies joining forces to get strategic advantage from that cooperation. So it's a different way of building new business, much more together and much less one company with a brilliant idea that is changing. And I think the whole uh, geopolitical and the strategic value of a number of the more scarce raw materials uh, is getting so much more prominent, both because the scarce resources are actually depleted and as a result of that, political powers get in the way and countries and companies are using that scarcity to actually um, well, maximize their influence either uh, in the economy or in their supply chain. So it's getting more strategic for our clients. It's getting more strategic for countries. Um, and uh, as a result, I think the relevance of this from a strategic perspective uh, for companies is gaining momentum very rapidly. And I expect that to become logic, become relevant uh, for most uh, of the sectors in which we uh, operate with a very marked and clear relevance of the food and agriculture business, where, of course, as one example, the whole discussion around uh, uh, around phosphate, nitrogen, but also water and the scarcity there for primary production will come up much more prominently over the, over the years and the decades to come. Well, thank you very much for that very interesting discussion. It's great to hear about how you see Sucre Economy becoming a strategic priority um, and also about the power of collaboration and partnerships to really build this momentum. So I, I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. And if you want to watch more sessions in our series on financing the circular economy, you can catch up on the summit site or on our social media channels. And if you want to dive into this topic in even more detail, we've recently published a paper which gives many more examples of financing the circular economy. And you can find this on the Ellen MacArthur Foundation website.